tell you exactly how I studied for a new subject in med school, step by step. From knowing absolutely zero to know everything that you need to know for this subject. Grab a pen and paper because you might need these steps yourself. I divide the whole process into two main parts. The preparation part and the learning part. The preparation part has five steps and the learning part has three steps. It's very simple, I promise you. So let's get started. The preparation part. The first step I take before anything else is to look at the lectures. I would see the titles of each lecture and then I will write in each the title of a lecture to MT document. This is very important as it gives me an overview of first of all how many lectures I'm gonna have and an overview of which main topics that there will be in the subject. The next step of preparation, I open each lecture description and then I see what is the learning outcome and how can I prepare for that lecture. So in my university, they write down exactly what are the learning outcomes of each lecture and how to prepare for that lecture. Not all universities has that, but it's not that a big deal because you can basically ask your teacher directly or you can send an email to them saying, hey, I want to prepare for this lecture. How can I prepare for it? Which like resources do you recommend? And what is the main learning outcome of this lecture? So what are the main takeaways of these lectures? And I bet that most teachers would absolutely love to help you out. But if you don't want to waste time on doing that, or you just don't feel for doing it, you can basically skip this step because I think the next steps are way, way, way more important. But as I have access to it, I do it anyway because I basically go into these descriptions and I copy paste it into my document where I have the overview. So the third step of preparation is that I open each lecture slide and then I skim through it I write the main titles in these lecture slides into my document below each lecture. Here I don't go into details, I just skim through it and I just write which main topics they will cover. This allows me to understand what it will be in each lecture because as the title itself not always tells me what it's gonna be about. And of course, certain lectures are just very bad and they maybe only have pictures and nothing else, like no text, nothing. So if you don't attend that certain lecture, you would not have any idea of what's going on in that lecture. But for whatever lectures you have that gives you some information, just use that and don't stress out about all the bad lecture slides. In step four, we are focusing on past papers. And this is probably <laughs> the most important step. So, past papers. What would I do with past papers when I have zero knowledge in the subject? Well, actually it will tell me a lot. What I would do is that I open the past paper, I skim through it. What I notice is what are the styles of these questions? Is it multiple choice? Is it essay? Or is it like more like clinical cases based, um, so what, are, what are the style of it? I will know this before I start studying because this will help me a lot in my study routine as I know how I have to prepare for this exam. And another thing I will notice in these past papers is like how detailed are the questions? Is it like very superficial, like very general or is it super super detailed that it actually requires me to memorize certain stuff and you would only know that by going into the past papers and seeing the previous years and uh, how they ask these questions and then the third thing i will do is i will like notice if there are certain topics that they keep asking year after year and they might not be the exact questions but it would be about the same topic and usually it happens you know there are certain things that is just absolutely important for you to know and what you would do here is like you would, would basically skim through just quickly see okay they ask about this they ask about that 
and then you will take the other uh, past paper from the later year and then you will notice, I bet you would notice if there are certain <laughs> topics that they keep asking about. What I do usually is like I mark that topic because then I know, okay, this topic I absolutely must nail because they will for sure ask about it. In this step, you can also decide to do flashcards. I, I personally don't do that, but I know certain people are super happy for flashcards. So you could turn all the questions from past papers into flashcards already now, I would recommend because even though you don't know, like you haven't studied the subject yet, you would already now like getting into the habit of going through these uh, past paper questions but yeah i don't do it personally i think it takes super long time to do it what i do instead i basically take the past paper and i will question myself in that past paper of course if they highlight already the answers which they do in my case i just try to you know like remove them so i would not know the answer i would put the answers below somewhere else so i can actively question myself now to the fifth and final step of preparation and this step is absolutely my favorite <laughs> because it just gives me peace of mind so categorizing the topics now we have a document filled with information of which type of topic will be covered in the lectures and in the past papers so these information are just golden but this list is just a bit chaotic like there is no logical way of going through it. It's not always that, for example, lecture A and B make sense like right after each other. So instead what I do, I categorize it according to what it makes sense for me. So I look through this list. Of course, like I don't know anything about the subject, but I'll still get an idea of it because I also look at some of their in my university notes from previous students and they usually categorize it in a super nice way. So I get inspired a lot by their way of categorizing it. And um, yeah, so for example, in med school, at least in the latest years of med school, for example, in dermatology or like ophthalmology, which I have right now, there are always like main category and then there are diseases or conditions. So that's how I categorize my must learn document. So I would have main category on one side and then I would have diseases or conditions on the other side. And then I categorize it like the main category would of course be like what are the characteristics of all the diseases that I put on the right side. So this is absolutely just amazing list to have because this will also like make it easier for you to know how to plan like a schedule, which, which topics you have to study and it just gives you an overview of like how far you were in, the, in your studying and I think in, for your head, like I think it's very good in general to categorize stuff, to get the bigger picture and then put all the conditions or like the subgroups under each main category. I think it's simply just, I love it. <laughs> okay, so now that we covered the preparation part, we go to the learning part itself. The first step of the learning part is simply start with the basics. It can be the anatomy or the physiology of the thing you're going to learn. I think in general, for every subject we're learning, there are always basics. Of course, if you are, let's say, starting the basic itself, I mean, like anatomy itself, then it might be a different case. But still, in that case, I think there are the basics of the basics, like what are the, what is a nerve, what is an artery, what is a vein, you know? So there are always basics. That's the first thing I start with. I don't go into super detail in that step. It's just to, you know, remind myself what this is about. And, and yeah, I think like before we can dig deep into a certain topic, we must understand the fundamentals. Now we have come to the second step of the learning part. And this is the main, main <laughs> step where I'm basically learning and understanding and trying to remember. So how I do it, I basically go to my list and I take one disease, I start learning. <laughs> I go to YouTube, I watch a video, try to understand every aspect of it. And uh, I use also notes from previous students. Like in my university, for example, they have super nice notes that students are sharing uh, among each other. And I think almost all university has some 
sort of notes where they share it with each other is very useful because I don't write notes because it's really waste of time <laughs> when there are notes that other students already made and I can, you know, I don't base only my knowledge on, on those notes because of course there can be mistakes and stuff, like we all do mistakes so what I do is like, of course, I use like YouTube videos and I use these notes and then I use my lectures and books as well. If I can find like super good books for, for that certain uh, subject, I combine those things. It might sound very overwhelming, but I, it's not like I go you know, deep into each of these resources. No, the main point of, of all, all this is to just understand overall what is this disease about, like trying to understand it. And while I do that, I don't write anything down. Like the only thing I write down is if um, if I want to like clear my my head, like or like try to make things make sense. So I would spread the sketch down on my iPad. Like oh, this is connected with this, and ah, this is like because of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just use it to to understand it in the process, but I don't write it to to as a, as a note. But once I feel okay. I really understand this. I think I will remember this and I think I can explain it to somebody. So what I do is that I put everything away and then I will simply take my iPad and then I will start explaining it. But I, I don't explain it out loud if I'm <laughs> outside. Um, yeah, because you have to be quiet. <laughs> I simply like write down as in my head try to explain it. This is a very nice thing to do. Like you write it down like while you're explaining it because I can use this. I can basically use this as as note if you can call it that. I can come back to it and revise it so I would always have this uh, all the things I learned in my paper of explanation. So this is basically also called Feynman's technique because if I while I'm trying to explain it I step up and I'm like okay I can I, I actually don't understand this then I go back I try to like understand more or, I, or sometimes more often it's more like I, I forgot certain medication name or a step that I had to take you know then I go and like try to okay how can I remember this how can I remember this then I go back and add it into my explanation um, process so this is the like, the main part of my learning. I, I absolutely I think this is the best way to, to learn. Once you really understand certain things, that you can explain it without looking at anything or like trying to help yourself. Um, it's just it will stick better. And of course, it's not like once I studied it and I remember everything. No, now I have this paper. I can then go back and revise it. We have reached the final step of learning and that is all about clinical presentations. This one I feel we don't talk enough about. This is so 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 important and I wish I knew that way earlier in med school. So after you study each disease you have to also study how the patient will be presented in the clinic, like in the realistic world. <laughs> I know this only applies to basically if you're studying like in the later years of med school, but I think as soon as you have the opportunity to, to like involve clinical presentation in your studying, you should do that. Because the way we learn about diseases, like I don't know if everyone does it, but like I feel like most of the time the way we learn about disease is like we learn how it can present. Like, etiology, symptoms, how to diagnose, how to investigate, how to treat, and what are the prognosis, all these things. That's fine. You learn all these things that, I mean, we have to. But then in the real world, you get the patient. It doesn't say on the patient's head, I have this disease. <laughs> or like, they don't come to you and tell you the exact symptoms of that certain disease that just doesn't work like that in, in real life. No, the patient will have different symptoms and they will have, like they can tell you have symptom one, two and three. And, and, but at the same time, they can have like, like four different diseases. So it's so, so important that we already now during med school, try to learn as many clinical presentations as possible because in that way we see a pattern we see how a patient in the real world will be presented with symptoms they come with with medication they are taking 
um, you know, their medical history, what happened to them before. We understand these, we make a pattern, we know what step to take because that's one of the hardest things. Like, okay, you have this patient, but which steps should you take? So, all right, I'm talking a lot. I just hope that if you can take one thing away from this is that study clinical presentations. All right, now that we went through all the steps, let me summarize it for you because you might feel a bit overwhelmed. I hope not, but let's revise. So I said there is a preparation part and then there is a learning part. In the preparation part, the first step is to write down the titles of each lectures into a document. The second step is to write the description of each lectures into that document. The third step is to open each lecture slides and write down each main topic that from that lecture under each title of each lecture. The fourth step is to take a look at your past papers, skim through it, see which styles of questions uh, are used and which topics are, are kept being asking like year after year. And the fifth step is to categorize all the topics that make sense to you. So you have a list that you can always go back to. So you have a very good overview. Then we have the learning part. And the first step is to learn the basics. Always go back to the fundamental and make sure that you understand these fundamentals before you start learning new things. And the second step is all about the learning itself. And of course, that depends on you, how you do it. But the way I do is that I try to learn that new topic very, very well. Try to then explain it by writing it down without looking at anything. And then I basically use that writing while I'm explaining it. I can use it for revising it later. The third and final step is to test yourself by reading clinical presentation questions. In that way, you can really get the whole now connect all the knowledge you have about that certain disease. So this was everything from me. If you have any questions, please comment below. I will make sure that I will reply as soon as I can. All right. See you next time.